Well, good evening. Wonky Astronomer here. Well, for the last few weeks, if you've been on the internet, you may have been inundated with images of Comet Neowise. But all those images have come from the Northern Hemisphere. And here in the Southern Hemisphere, we haven't seen anything because it's been below the horizon or up in the daytime. But uh, towards the end of July, we should be able to see it over there in the West. So let's take a look at when and where you can see Comet Neowise if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. The view I'll be showing is the way it will look from Sydney, Australia at latitude 34 degrees south. Uh, anywhere at the same latitude will look the same. It might just vary a little bit in the time. So it might be plus or minus half an hour from what I'm showing. And it should be pretty close to the way it will look from between latitudes about 30 and 40 degrees. Anywhere north or south of those latitudes, it will look a little bit different, but the general idea is the same. And that is that the comet will be getting a little bit higher each night in the northwest sky after sunset. So for us in the southern hemisphere, until now, the comet has pretty much only been up above the horizon in the daytime. So, for example, this is showing uh, how it was on July 15. And I've got um, daylight turned off, so it's, it's showing all the stars, even though the sun is up. And the green area is uh, the horizon. So anything in this green section is below the horizon. And we've got the direction markers here. So the sun's rising over here in the east, or the near the northeast. And... As the day progresses, the sun gets higher, the comet rises. So here's the comet here. And then in the afternoon, the comet goes below the horizon. And of course, the sun is still up. So that's why we haven't been able to see it here in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, if I step forward a few days, so this is July 15. This is 16, 17, 18, 19. As you can see, at the same time each day, the, the comet is getting a little bit higher. If we continue that even further, we get to a point where the, the comet starts to get above the horizon after sunset. I'll move forward to nautical dusk, which is when the sun is 12 degrees below the horizon. And that's a time when it's getting pretty dark. It's not completely dark, but you should be able to see a few stars. If this comet is bright enough, you might be able to see it. If we step forward another few days, so July 23, 24, it's now above the horizon at about uh, nautical dusk. It's now about mm, six degrees above the horizon. Now. That's still pretty low, it will be pretty difficult to see, but probably around July 26 is when you might want to start looking for it. So just after sunset, look towards the northwest, a little bit to the right of northwest. You may see, um, in fact, on July 26, the moon will be almost exactly above the comet, like that. Unfortunately, the moon will also make the comet more difficult to see because it will uh, light up the sky and uh, the comet is, of course, very dim. Now, we can look at the um, information about the comet. It says here that it will be magnitude 4.8, 4 which, if that's true, it might be visible to the naked eye. But I actually doubt that. The problem with comets is nobody knows what they're going to do. You can't really predict what the brightness of a comet will be um, in the future. So this is really just an estimate and it's likely to be um, not correct. I really think you'll have a lot of trouble finding it on July 26. If we go forward to July 27, 28, it's now at 11 or 12 degrees above the horizon. You might be able to see it there. I think by July 30, you should be able to see the comet. You might need binoculars. 
or a small telescope, but binoculars are the best because you can see a wide area of sky, you can scan the sky, um, and, and you should be able to pick it up as a, as a fuzzy blob. This uh, application shows it with a tail, but that's just a generic tail that this application adds to any comet. All the comet tails look the same in uh, Sky Safari. Now, if you want to look at where it is in relation to the constellations, you've got a bright star up here, Arcturus. I can normally recognize Arcturus because it's uh, bright, it's a little bit orange, and there's a star just to its left. So there's like two stars there, and uh, that makes it recognizable. And Arcturus will be pretty much in the north. So there's north, Arcturus is, is passing there, and that's that's about a third of the way from the horizon to the uh, to the zenith. Zenith being directly overhead. So if you can find Arcturus and draw a line at about 45 degrees down and to the left, that goes to the northwest horizon, the comet should be mm, about halfway between Arcturus and the horizon. A little closer to the horizon. Now if we step forward a little more, the comet gets higher each day. More or less going straight up from day to day until it's about level with Arcturus on August 10. The other problem is of course that the comet is now getting further away from the Sun so I think the Northern Hemisphere would have got the best view. By the time we get to see it in late July, it will be further from the Sun and so dimmer, also further from the Earth. So don't expect it to be as spectacular as the pictures you've seen from the Northern Hemisphere. If we keep stepping forward, August 11, 12, 13, 14, it starts to get between uh, Arcturus and Spica, this uh, bright white star in Virgo. As I said, it'll be getting dimmer and dimmer. Now, an important thing for seeing comets is uh, whether the moon is up. So the moon is at about first quarter phase on July 27, when we might just start to be able to see the comet low on the northwest horizon. So. The moon is, is not in a good place. It's uh, going to interfere with the viewing of the comet. And then it gets bigger and brighter as it moves across the sky, but further from the comet. And it will get to full moon on August 4. So by then, it'll be on the opposite side of the sky from the comet. It'll be way over here in the east. The comet will still be in the northwest. So it's pretty much out of the way and every day after that will be better because the moon will be essentially below the horizon when you're out looking for the comet just after sunset. So after August 4, the moon shouldn't be a problem at all. So there you have it, Comet Neowise coming soon to the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs>